everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'm gonna be showing you how to build a metal and wood pour over coffee station. But don't worry, this is a surprisingly easy DIY and you don't need any metal working experience. So let's go ahead and get started on modern builds. All the metal used in this project is eighth inch plate steel and I had some left over from a previous project. Plate steel is awesome because you can get surprisingly straight, clean cuts using a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder. After measuring to the proper length, I cut it following the line. The trick to getting a good straight cut is to do it in passes. The first one is just to establish your line and make a groove, and then from there you'll go back and forth until you cut all the way through your piece. Then I used the 1x6 piece of red oak that I'll be making all of my wooden pieces from to mark a line so that I can cut my plate steel to the right width. I want to match that piece of wood. And if you're curious, I just clamped my piece of plate steel down to a piece of old 3 quarter inch plywood as a cutting mat. Here, I'm marking locations where I'll be cutting a groove halfway through the metal with the angle grinder so that I can bend it to 90 degrees more easily. Once I cut my grooves to the right depth, I set my angle grinder at 45 degrees and I created a bevel on each side of that groove. This will help everything fold cleanly and look like a miter joint in wood. This bending jig was based off of one from my podcast partner, Ben Ueda, the Modern Maker Podcast. Link's in the description. Essentially, I just clamped a piece of angle iron inside of the groove, and then I was able to bend the metal in place with that holding it flat. Because I cut that groove, enough of the material was removed that it was easy enough to bend by hand, which was super convenient. If you need a little bit of extra help, you could clamp some 2x4s onto the face of the metal, and then that would give you a little bit of mechanical advantage and leverage. After I found the center point of the metal, I used a 1 and 5 8 inch hole saw to create a hole that the dripper will go through. In hindsight, I probably should have done this step before I bent the metal, that way it would be easier to clamp everything down. The hole saw can really bite in and really yank your arm, so you want to make sure that workpiece is held down as securely as possible. And to break the edges and clean everything up, I sanded all of my corners down. I used 150 grit sandpaper. And finally, to clean everything up, I used acetone to remove that oil and grease. Moving on to the wooden part of this project, I got that 1x6 piece of red oak I mentioned earlier, and I cut it to the inside dimension of the top of the metal piece. Whenever I'm cutting with the circular saw, I always like to use a speed square and to cut on top of inch and a half thick styrofoam insulation. After sanding that piece to 150 grit, I put on two coats of Maker Brand Simple Finish. Links for that will be in the description. You just apply a thick coat, let it set for about 10 minutes, and then wipe off all of the excess. Then, I got some construction adhesive from Gorilla Glue to attach the wood to the inside of the metal. Because it's going on the end grain of the wood, I made sure to really work it in with a finger so that I got good penetration. Once I had everything in place, I clamped it all down and cleaned up any of the squeeze out with a wet rag. Quickly, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Trade Coffee Co. Coffee personalized to you. With over 400 coffees from the nation's best roasters, you're sure to find the right fit for you. Just take a simple six question quiz based on your coffee preferences and get matched with the new coffee suited to your taste. Now we're making a pour over setup, but they've got roasts that are great for cold brew, espresso, classic coffee makers, French press, and everything in between. Trade coffees not only taste great, but they're ethically sourced from respectable, responsible farmers, and prices start right about $15 a bag. After you choose what roasts are right for you, they're packed fresh and shipped right to your door. And right now, Trade Coffee is offering the first 100 viewers that follow the link down in the description and purchase using the code MODERNBUILDS 50% off their first bag. That's right, link is in the description, code is right here, so make sure and take that quiz and find the right coffee for you. Thanks, Trade! Now that I've made the main body of the pour over station, I want to show you a couple of accessories and stains you can make to customize this to fit the way you make your coffee. For this first one, I measured the base of a standard coffee bag and I added a half inch all the way around. Then I cut a piece of wood and metal to that size and I'll be connecting them later on to make a stand for the coffee bag. The second thing I'm making is a stand for the kettle. If you're making pour over coffee, it's always great to have a place to store it and set it for when it's hot. After using a makeshift compass to make a circle with a radius half an inch bigger than the kettle, I used the jigsaw to cut that piece out. 
After it was cut, I sanded it down and then used it to trace the line for the metal base. And I was happy to find out you can cut circles in plate steel really easily with the angle grinder. Just like before, you want to make really shallow passes, this time even shallower so that you don't pinch the blade as it's rotating. And I used construction adhesive to attach these pieces of wood to their metal bases. The last accessory I'm making is a holder for the coffee filters. After figuring out its inside dimension, I drew the shape of the holder and cut it out with the jigsaw. Of course it wasn't perfectly straight, but I did my best to stay on the line as much as possible. What's really cool about this accessory is it attaches to the side of the coffee station using magnets. I used a Forstner bit to drill out a recess that was the same size as the magnet, and then I used Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel to attach them permanently. In fact, they were in there so good that whenever I went to replace the ceramic magnets with neodymium ones, I had to drill them out instead of pull them out. And the final step to these accessories was to apply a couple coats of Maker Brand Simple Finish to them. So thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna watch more from my channel, you can click the videos on the side here. And if you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button down below me. If you wanna keep up with me throughout the week, Instagram is the place to do that. I am at Modern Builds. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.